Welcome to Revit Crash Course for Architects, Session 7, Modeling Roofs. This course is designed to help transition from 2D drafting to Revit and master its essential tools and features in the easiest and smoothest way possible. Let's begin! In this video, we'll create roofs by footprint, we'll establish work planes, we'll create roofs by extrusion, we'll attach walls to our roofs, and we'll add roof soffits, fascias, gutters, and accessories. So taking a look at our 3D model here, we've been spending a lot of time on windows and doors, but we've never really finished our building envelope. Today we're going to focus on our roofs. The first thing that we're going to focus on is getting the profiles of our walls correct. We did this a little bit in our last video. I'm just going to rerun through that process quickly again. So I'm in my 3D view. You can actually do this in a 3D view or an elevation view. I'm going to click on my wall, edit my profile, and you'll see that it sort of turns blank here and you can see through it. So I'm going to adjust this to my structure beyond. And I'm actually going to leave this one so that you can see what happens when we get our roof on here. But now at least I have this wall and this wall aligning with where our structure is. This end wall is not matching those yet. So I'm going to go to my left side. I'm manually going to bring this wall down just a little bit. It's not perfect, but it's enough for us to be able to see that structure. So in looking at this, I know that I'm actually going to have a piece of wall that's going to come across the top here, and that hasn't been modeled yet. But let's get our roofs in first, and then we can add that upper wall. Based on the structure of our building, we know that the roof is going to end up in three different sections. We're going to have a tall roof and then two lower roofs on the sides. I'm going to come up to the top tab here, drop down roof, and you'll see that it's asking you about a lowest level. You don't want to create a roof on a floor level. It will show up in the wrong place. So we actually want to place this on our top of wall. You might remember from our elevations that that has to do with this elevation here around um, where we placed our edge of steel. Once you're in the roof command, you'll see that it's very similar to creating a component. You have to finish the command in order to create the roof element. So coming over here to the properties box, you'll see that we have a number of roofs already preloaded for us. In this case, we actually don't need to have anything um, that's very thick because we've already modeled our structure. I'm going to assume that I'm using one of these generic roofs and I'm actually gonna edit this type. So instead of saying it's generic nine inches, I'm going to duplicate this type. I'm going to call it metal deck insulation EPDM because I know that that's what my roof is going to be. So we're going to go in here and we're going to edit the thickness and the structure of this roof. So the first thing I'm going to do is click on my layers. I'm going to type in deck and you'll see there's a product in here for metal deck. I'm going to click on that. I know that my metal deck is going to be two and a half inches thick. And then I'm going to insert a layer and you'll see that this automatically went above my metal deck and that's fine because this is the top and this is the bottom. Layers above the wrap, layers below the wrap. My next element here is going to be rigid insulation. And you can see if I just type insulation, there's numerous ones that are in the Revit material library. In my case, I want it to be this rigid insulation. Based on the climate zone where I'm at, I'm going to put a minimum of four inches on this. And then I'm going to add one more layer here. And you can see there's a material called roofing EPDM membrane. There's another one called TPO. These are two different types of material. In our case, we're going to use the EPDM. Now, if I try and use these all as structure, Revit is going to give me an error. You can only have one material as the base structure. So I'm going to drop this down and my insulation, I'm going to call that a thermal air layer. And then for my top layer, I'm going to call this a membrane layer. And you'll see that 
A membrane layer does not have to have a thickness. You can model your membrane with a thickness and, and EPDM membranes do indeed have a thickness, but usually we don't have that for a membrane layer. So I'm gonna click OK. And now if I drop over this preview button, you'll see that metal deck and that insulation that we've modeled in this roofing type. So now what I wanna do is I'm still in my roofing command and I'm going to create this roof by footprint. And the reason I'm doing that is when I just drop down that roofing button, it automatically creates a roof by footprint. There is an alternative and we will go over that in a few minutes. So I'm gonna open up my presentation plan. And the reason I'm doing this is so that I can see the area that I want this roof to go. The easiest is to literally trace a box around your lines. And then I can actually set this to have an offset because most roofs don't end just right at the wall, right? So um, I can move this two feet out. Same thing for this here. And this here. Now, if you'll notice, I have these little triangle indicators on each of the ends of these roofs. What I'm going to do is I'm going to complete this task and I'm gonna click my check arrow, and then I'm gonna go back to 3D, and you'll see what that did. Um, by showing all of the sides as defining the slope of the roof, it creates a hipped roof element for us. That's really not what we want in this case. We're gonna have a sloped roof on this, and it's um, gonna be a mono pitch. So we're gonna go back, and we're gonna edit this footprint, and then I'm gonna click on these elements here, and I'm going to take this defines slope off. Now I'm going to complete that and you can see it changed from a hip roof to a gable roof. But this really still isn't what I want because I want this to be a mono sloped roof, right? So I'm going to edit this footprint one more time and I'm going to take this one off. And now we have our mono sloped roof. Now this one looks really funny. Obviously the pitch is way too high. That's not what we wanted it to do. But I'm just showing you how you can create a roof by footprint in the plan. A better way to create this particular roof is probably going to be to do an extrusion because then we can make it ride exactly along the top of our structural members. So I'm actually going to delete this one and instead I'm going to come to roof and I'm going to drop this down and you can see roof by extrusion here. So you have to drop down the little arrow to get that option. You can also do a roof by a face, but this only works if you're using some weird kind of mass object. You can see here it's, it's draping over. Um, this would be as if you were using a, a membrane roof for a tent structure or something like that. So we're gonna do our roof by extrusion, but in order for that to work, it's gonna ask us to create a work plane. So you need to think about your work plane as being perpendicular to the extrusion that you're going to create. In this case, our roof is going to be perpendicular to one of these walls. I'm gonna pick this front wall, and here's my option. I can pick a plane, I'm gonna click on that, and you'll see that I'm hovering over these faces of walls and it's outlining in blue. So I'm gonna pick this face, and then it's asking me which level I want my roof to reference. I want it to be at top of wall, because my top of roof, remember, was for this upper space here. I'm gonna say okay. So now I'm back into that create roof dialog. I'm gonna to go to my front view here and I'm physically going to be creating my extrusion. So I selected this line and I can go back to that front view so you can see it one more time. And I can actually extend this out and if I click on this, you'll notice that my roof is created right along that line. I'm going to unlock this reference plane. And by unlocking that, it will now allow me to move that roof up to the top of my walls. Now in this case, if I go back to my 3D view, my roofs are not extending properly away from the edges like I'd like them to. So I, I know that my extrusion start was at the face of this wall and I want it to be 
a two foot offset. So I'm going to actually make this two feet and you'll see that it extended out. Okay, in this case, off the back side, it's slightly hanging over. So I'm going to align these. Now they're fully in alignment and I'm going to add two feet to this dimension. In this case, since it's a negative dimension, it actually needs to go up. Okay, so now I know that my offsets are two feet on all sides, and, and you can see that if I rotate the 3D view up for that roof. As I'm looking at this pitch slope, I'm realizing I'm, I'm not really sure I want to see that membrane on the top of there. I think I might actually want this to be a little bit different. So we're gonna modify this, and I'm gonna rename it. Instead of EPDM, let's put metal roof. So I'm gonna go back into my structure. Instead of being a membrane layer on the top here, I'm gonna actually have this be a finish and I'm gonna give it a thickness. And you can see there's metal roofing standing seam. There's metal roofing, just very generic. And then there's a metal roofing standing seam product. And that's the one that we're going to select here. And I'm actually going to give it a thickness of 1 8 of an inch. That's a little thicker than what the real material would end up being, but you'll see why I want to do this thickness because it actually shows up here um, in my section of that roof style. Now, one thing this material doesn't have is it does not appear to have a hatch pattern with it. So if I come into my appearance and I just take a look at this, yeah, see, it's very, very simple gray, but that's not really what I want it to look like. So I'm actually going to assign a surface pattern. So if you go to the graphics tab, and on the foreground, we're going to click pattern here. These are all the patterns that are preloaded into Revit. It is possible to create your own and bring some in. Revit hatch patterns are very different than CAD patterns though. So you just keep that in mind. It can be very complex to create these. In our case, I'm gonna use this vertical hatch on here. And we're gonna see what that does. Right, so it's a little bit odd um, because of the angle that we're, we're showing here. But when I look at this in a plan or a top view, you can now start to get the inference of um, sloped lines on that roof. Now, because this is a pattern, a hatch pattern that's associated with the vertical, it will always appear vertical no matter the orientation of my building. So if I turn it this way, my lines go up and down on my screen. If I turn it this way, my lines go up and down on my screen. Um, so we actually don't want that particular pattern. I'm gonna go back in, edit this type, go back to my roofing standing seam. The reason that the pattern doesn't appear the way that it should is because it's just a drafting pattern. We actually want it to be a model pattern instead, and this will associate um, the X, Y axis with it. So I go into my fill patterns in model pattern, and in this case, we're gonna use six inch vertical. And you can see the options here. This is the spacing of those lines and the angle that you want them to appear at. So we're gonna use that one instead. And now you can see that that hatch properly aligns with the actual orientation of the roof surface. And it stays that way no matter if I'm in a top view or if I'm in a corner 3D view. So that's the difference between drafting and model hatches when you're using uh, material indicators. Since our building is symmetrical, I wanna show you a quick way that you can duplicate this exact same roof over to the other side. So I'm gonna to go to my first floor plan. Not my presentation plan, I'm just using my actual floor plan. So I'm gonna to go to my F1 floor plan because that has my elevation indicators on it. I'm actually gonna move my south elevation indicator and I'm gonna use this. So I'm gonna click on the roof, I'm gonna use the copy, and I'm gonna select the midpoint of this upper roof. And now it has literally flipped this roof over to the other side. But you can see that there were these walls that we really hadn't dealt with. So I'm actually going to do a different mode for these walls. I'm gonna click on the wall and I'm gonna attach the top and base. Once I do that and I click on the roof, 
Revit automatically recognizes that this wall is attached to this roof. And if the roof changes, it will automatically change the profile. So we're gonna do the same thing with this one. We're gonna attach top base, we'll click on the roof, and now those are properly attached. So if I go in three dimensions, you can see everything about these roofs is the same now. So let's go about modeling our upper roof. The easiest way to do this is, again, to do it by extrusion. We've already determined the slope of our roofs um, based on our steel structure. So I'm going back to my floor plan, check that elevation one more time. Architecture, roof by extrusion. We're gonna pick a plane. We're gonna pick this front plane here. And in this case, we want the level to be associated with the top of roof. We're gonna select these two. Take a look at it in three dimensions. You can see when you do that, it actually extruded the roof down instead of up. So we're gonna go back to that elevation and I'm just gonna move this up. And now my elevation matches. So we need to edit this profile a little bit. We need to take this and we need to offset another two feet. In this case, I'm doing it with lines so that I'm exact. And then I'm gonna delete those center lines and connect these two because you can't have more than one line determining your roof pitch. So now when I look at that in 3D, we have our extruded roof. I'm gonna do the same thing with my walls. I wanna attach them to the top and the base. So click on the wall, click on the roof, and it will extrude up. Click on the wall, click on the roof, And then one more time, click on the wall, click on the roof, and those extrude up in place. Now I have a couple of problems here though because I have a big old hole right in this middle section. And if I look at this from the left or from the right, uh, my walls and my roof immediately meet each other and that's not what we want. So we're actually going to set this to be two foot off and that will extend this direction. Let's go around to the back here. Now we actually have quite a large overhang in this case. So you can attach this roof, even though we've already adopted that profile. So now in this case, I actually wanna attach these side walls to have them go up. And then I can see what that's going to do in this little niche area. I can't leave this part of my structure exposed to the cold weather because it will just cause all of this to bring frost into the building. So we'll have to come up with a solution for covering this structure and protecting it from the cold. Something I think could look really nice here and would help protect everything might be to build a false wall in front of the structure and then we could have a curved soffit that sort of followed our curve of our window. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually gonna copy one of these walls because I know it's in the same plane and I'm not gonna worry about all of these windows. I don't need these, I'm delete this, delete this. And now I can edit the profile of this wall. So I'm gonna delete that piece. I'm actually gonna bring it out. I'm gonna remove all these constraint errors. I'm actually gonna move it out and I'm gonna match the outside of my structure and actually it's going to probably get a little bit bigger because if you imagine running a wall down the side of this structure it's going to get a little bit thicker so i'm going to move this out let's say eight inches and i'm going to match my top profile i'm going to trim these sides 
And then I need to really think about what I want to have happen here. If I just come straight across, I don't think that's going to look very good. Um, but if I were to come out at it, let's measure from the floor level to the bottom here. So that's 14 feet. I like that it's a nice round number. Let's use a curve and see what happens. So we can actually do some really interesting things with the profile of this wall. I can make this arch higher or lower. Um, I want to, again, make sure that my structure gets properly covered in the end. So let's set this radius to be 30 feet. And now we can trim our bottom piece. And you'll get an error when you overlap these walls, but you can see a little bit what I'm trying to achieve here. So the plane of this wall goes up and then it's going to curve over. You'll see that we have some errors where the walls are not quite joining together correctly. You can address that by selecting uh, the join button and you can connect these geometries. So I'm going to hover over my wall and I'm going to select my other wall and now they they are cleaned up to one another okay you know looking at this I feel like maybe it's still a little bit high here so I'm going to edit this profile again and I'm actually going to bring these walls down let's bring it down another two feet and see what that looks like and then maybe we can increase the pitch of this so it's more like a barrel vault. In this case, I'm going to set the radius to 22 feet. Now we're getting some of those same cleanup issues again. We're going to click the first one. We're going to join the geometry to this second wall. It looks like we're actually having an error. If you zoom in really close here, you can see that the faces of these walls are not coplanar. That's what's causing the problem. So I'm actually going to click my align tool. I'm going to tab until I get the face of that wall, tab until I get the face of this wall, and now they're properly aligned. So sometimes you have to do a little detective work and figure out why Revit's not letting you do what you want to do. Okay, so I'm happy with how this is looking now. Um, the owner wanted this to feel sort of like a sanctuary on the back of the building, and there's some discussion about maybe this being used as a wedding venue at some point. So, you know, this feels like it could be a, a really nice altar space or something. So let's flip back around to the front of our building. And now we need to figure out how best to address this situation here. You could delete one of these two walls, extend the other wall over, put a window in it, and then you could edit the profile of this wall. That's one way to achieve it. Another way is to create a small piece of wall that spans between this and this. In general, I like having full pieces of wall. I think it's the easiest to deal with, so I'm actually going to delete this one. You'll see that I get a little error there. You can just skip it for now. I'm actually going to trim and complete that wall over to the other side. And now, if I go back into my presentation floor plan, I know that my building is symmetrical. I can simply grab this window, mirror it, there it is again, and now all I have to do is edit the profile of this wall. You'll get this note that Revit removes the top and base attachments. It's telling you that it's temporarily not going to attach to the roof, and that's fine. I'm going to switch to my front view here because I know that I don't need this part of that wall. So if I trim these two pieces, now if I try and trim this separately, I'll just show you what happens here. I'll cut this, I'll trim here and here. Revit does the same thing again. It doesn't understand that you want to fill in that center piece. So I'm going to undo that. And rather than have it not be completed, we're going to give it a short little bridge piece here. And then it will remember the connection up to that roof 
and you'll see that it does create a small piece of wall. And that's what we want to see right there. So if I go back to my 3D view, now it's fill in that end wall. But you can also see interior. Here's my inside wall that's not the same thickness as our outside wall. This is going to represent, um, even if they're building that wall coplanar, you have to model them as separate elements because otherwise it'll tag as if it's an exterior wall on the inside of the building and that's really not what you want. So now looking at this, obviously our vestibule isn't quite finished here and that's okay. We're going to take the opportunity to take a look at our roof pitch and see what we might want to do here. Does it want to be this tall? Does it want to come down a little further? I think it wants to follow the same pitch. So I'm going to copy that same roof down, but I'm going to change where the work plane is. Instead of being our work plane being the back wall, I'm actually going to pick this front wall here. And now you can see that it's associating with this wall. So I think at the peak of this, I want to have some space up here for signage and maybe there will be an interesting clear story window or something. Um, but I don't want it to feel too short either. So let's take a look at our south elevation. Remember, you can't use dimension lines in a 3D elevation view. I want to see how tall this is. A quick way is just to use a sketch line. So it's 10 foot 6 there. I think I'm going to move that up probably 18 inches and just see what it looks like. Yeah, see that feels a little bit better to me. Now obviously our sides here, we need to edit this profile. We don't want these lines to be this long. I'm going to take this, I'm going to trace it and say two foot offset. Two foot offset. I can delete the old sketch lines. I can trim these together. And now you can see our roof is a little bit shorter. If I go back to my 3D view, now I can take these walls, attach them to my roof, and actually I can change my extrusion end here too. I'm going to align this to the face of this wall. So I'm going to go to the back side of that extrusion and I'm just using the align tool to achieve that. I'm going to click on my wall, attach to top base. Now I've done that for all of my walls. And I can see with this small pitch roof, our opening is visible. So I need to edit this profile one more time. and I need to scooch it down so it's not visible. So I'm pretty happy with the way that this is turned out. You know, we're gonna do a little bit more work on this. Maybe this wants to come out further and there might be, you know, some columns or something. But for now, we have a good feeling here. I can see with my upper space, this is, this is a lot of openness. So I need to think about how am I gonna fill this in? What is the lettering for the building gonna look like? Is there gonna be some kind of a emblem up here or maybe an end wall vent for mechanical, something like that, okay? So one thing I'm noticing is that these sidewalls here, these really would make a lot more sense if they lined up and bypass the structure on this outside. So I think our dimensions are gonna slightly change on this front. I'm going to go back to my presentation plan and I'm going to draw a section view right through the middle here. Now I'm getting an error that none of my views are visible in this. That's because of the view template that's applied to the presentation plan. So I've gone back to my floor plan and I'm going to create a section view right through this area of the building just so I can see how the roof and the sidewalls is going to interact. And double click on my view to open it up. And I can see here that here's my roof, it's sitting on top of my structure. Here's my end wall from the other side, sort of projecting out. 
And it's going to make a lot of sense if I'm able to build a stud wall that would attach to the outside of this frame. And then I could put all of my exterior sheathing and my insulation and then I could flash this roof up into it. So then going back to my floor plan, I think that means that these walls really would want to move out to the outside of this structure. Easy way to do that is going to be to select this space, select that face, and move them that way. I'm going to unjoin these elements. This wall face could continue on all the way back here. So again, it's easier to have this all be one element. I'm going to go to my right side view here. So if I want my, my top wall here to follow the profile of my roof, I really need to model these as two separate pieces. So I'm going to copy that piece of wall and then I'm going to edit the profile of it. I'm going to bring the bottom up and remove those constraints because it's telling me I can't have a wall that's not attached. And that's fine. I'm going to connect it to the sidewall and I'm going to bring it all the way across to the sidewall here. And you can see now they're all joined in one long wall. As I'm in this side view, I'm realizing that my back roof does not extend properly beyond like my other roofs do. So I'm actually going to rotate this around and I'm going to align this end with these faces like that. So now I have a little bit of an overhang there. And you can see that this corner is now nicely resolved. We know that we have a column that comes up through here. Um, we're gonna have some flashing for the roof that's gonna come around the siding. But now we have a really nice clean profile wall. Now an easy way to get this back to the other side is gonna be to mirror it, but it's gonna be really difficult to see that in plan. So let's go back to our section view. Now you can see this wall is cut through here. It's just sitting here on this level and in real life it would not do this. We would clean this up. So I'm going to select this wall and I'm going to mirror it around our center point. You don't need to worry about that highlighted wall overlap. You're going to fix that in a minute. Now I'm going to align the face of this wall with the face of my corner wall. I'm going to join these two elements together. That way they clean up nicely. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to align the face of this wall. So I'm tabbing through until I get that large face with that. And now you have a nice cleanup on that side. So if I take a look at this in elevation view, now you can see what happens this wall previously, before we had been moving around our roof, had its own separate profile. So I'm actually going to unjoin that. When you have multiple walls joined together, sometimes they don't quite interact properly with the roofs. So you always want to check it where your seams are. We're going to edit this profile again. Remember now that we've added our exterior wall, we're not quite at the overhang we would want to be. So I'm going to draw a sketch line up. I'm going to sketch line out at two feet because that's what I want my overhang to be. I'm going to mirror this line right around our center. Delete our old sketch. Trim these together. And now you have that two foot offset again. Okay, so now we really have all of our envelope enclosed. We've got a roof over our vestibule. We've got a roof at our high level and our two side roofs. Both of them have overhangs. Let's go through some of the options for the elements that you can add to a roof. So I'm going to go back to my architecture tab. I'm going to drop down my roof side and I'm going to add a roof fascia on one of my roof edges here. If you drop this down, you'll see that there's only one profile loaded here. You can change this. You can download different fascia profiles. Architecture, roof, fascia. I'm going to select the top edge. And you'll see that if they're part of the same element, they clean up pretty nicely. So we're going to go all the way around. I'm 
We're going to escape to finish that. We're going to go back to architecture. Now we're going to do a roof gutter. And in this case, it's attaching to our fascia here. I don't show any end caps. That's fine. That'll come later on. But we know that this long stretch of roof would at least have a gutter on that side. So I'm going to flip to the other side and do the same thing. And there you go. So I've added our roof fascia and our roof gutters to all of the roof extrusions that we've done so far. I've noticed one thing about this one, it actually was not matching the face of that wall. So it was extending, you can see our gutters are extending in here. You can grab that dot and you can just move them right back. So the last thing I'm going to show you for roof accessories is a roof soffit panel. This is a little bit misleading because it makes you think that you can add angled soffits uh, along, you know, the bottom of these angled roofs or something. It, it's really difficult to do that with this tool. It's really only meant for flat soffits. So I'm going to drop this down one more time. I'm going to say roof soffit. It's going to ask me what level I want to put this on. I'm going to do it top of wall. And I'm just going to do it here on this small roof. So if you come up to your options up here, you can see where you can pick roof edges. So I'm going to select my roof and Revit is automatically creating this outline for me. Now my level is set to where I told it to go at the top of wall. And I want you to see what happens when I complete this. It just floats there in space, which really is not what you would want. So I can bring this down to match the bottom side of my fascia like that. Now it's going to look a little bit odd and, and in this case I'm actually going to add some columns out front and I'm going to have you know some front pieces for trim on this. So one more thing I want to show you with roofs now that we've done all of the roofing accessories is a roof skylight. So skylights are actually modeled as windows okay but they're holstered in roofs. So if you drop this down, we do have an 08 skylight in here. And you can see these different sizes. I'm going to go with a 28 by 72. I'm actually going to put it in the top area over our atrium. Okay, I'm just plopping these in here. But you can see that the family goes straight through the roof construction. And in this case, you can actually see beyond this into one of the structural members. So I know that's not where I want that to go, um, but it's really tough to sort of place these. So we need to start looking at how to have a roof plan. I can do it by using my 3D view, but that's not very helpful because I can't annotate and I can't use the same tools. So let's go down in our project browser. And if you come down here, you'll actually see roof plans. So it's on this sheet, roof plan, new R1. So when I open up my roof plan, you'll notice that something looks a little odd here. We can't actually see our roofs on this. That's because the Revit template doesn't know what your roof levels are set to. So you're actually going to come over to the properties and you're going to edit this view range. And you're going to tell it what levels you want it to be associated with. So we're going to say that our top is unlimited and our bottom is going to be at the top of wall level. Now, if I set my cut plane at only four feet above my top of wall level, it's going to be cutting halfway through my clear story. So I'm actually going to set my cut plane so it's about 20 feet above that, and it should miss our cut wall. So now you can see the top roof here, but I can't see the roofs below. That's because I haven't told it to look below the level of the top wall. So if I go back to this roof range, my view depth, I can actually tell it to look below that top of wall level. If I apply this, now you can see all of our roofs below that. Something else that's really handy is you can actually set your underlay of your first floor under this. And so you'll see an outline of where your structure is and where your walls are, and that can be really handy. So I change the orientation here to look up 
that tells Revit I'm actually cutting the floor and I'm looking up. So you can see where your offsets are and, and if you need to adjust them. So these ones look pretty good. And now I can go in here and I can adjust those skylights. So I know I want them to land over the top of my atrium space. Let's put them something like that. And now you can measure because you're in a plan view, eight feet between those, that looks pretty good. I wanna make sure I'm not gonna hit any of my grid lines. So let's move this centered on the grid line and then move it four feet. Actually, let's move it one more foot because our grid lines are 10 foot on center. And now we'll just duplicate these right across the top there. And now I've installed four skylights in my space. Let's go back to that roof plan. Let's turn off our underlaying. So we're going to set this to none. We're going to apply that. And now you can see all of your roofs again. Usually in a roof plan, I turn off all of my elevations, so I'm actually going to hide these in view. And you can hide each one individually, or you can actually go in and you can go in and edit. So this is actually set to a view template of a floor plan. That's not what we want. Let's set it to roof plan, and you'll see that those automatically disappear. Thanks very much, and I'll see you in video eight. This course is provided by MGS Global Group. We provide Revit, Archicad, and AutoCAD drafting for architecture and design firms. Feel free to reach out to us if you need production drafting at mgsglobalgroup.com. Don't forget to subscribe.